What's a geometric series? Why are there so many formulas for geometric series? How do I know which one to use when? What's up y'all? I'm Tom. This is like a math class. We're going to answer those questions and more in this video. Let's get to it. What is a geometric series? Well, first you need to know if you don't already know that a series is the sum of the values of a sequence. So, and that means a geometric series is simply the sum of the values of a geometric sequence. So the first thing that we see is that we actually have two separate equations and these are called two finite geometric series formulas. So let's be specific. A finite geometric series just means that we're going to add up to a specific term and we call that term n. Even though we've got two different series formulas here, most of the variables, actually all of the variables, represent the same exact thing. So here, s of n is equal to the sum up to the nth term. n is equal to the term number, which we also call the position. u of 1 is equal to the value of the first term, and r is equal to the common ratio. So what's the difference between these two equations? Well, it's really a matter of preference, but here's what we suggest just to help eliminate extra negative signs floating around in your calculations. When the absolute value of the common ratio of r is greater than 1, which means that r is going to be less than negative 1 or r is going to be greater than 1, then we say use this equation here. But when negative 1 is less than r is less than 1, which means that r is falling between negative 1 and 1, so it's a fraction uh, value or decimal value between 1 and negative 1, then we're going to use this equation here. If you don't follow those rules, that's totally okay. Like I said, the only difference is going to be that you're going to get some negative values mixed in there, and that sometimes complicates things a little bit more. But really, there is no difference between the two formulas. So let's put this to use. Here we're going to find the sum of 3 plus 6 plus 12 plus 24 all the way up to the 13th term. What I like to do for any of my sequence and series problems is I like to list out all the information that I can gather from either my sequence or my series or any of the information that's given to me in the problem. So we know that u of 1 is equal to 3. We know that n is going to equal 13 because we're going up to the 13th term. And we could find r, so we would take 6 and divide it by 3. We see that that's 2. We see that 12 divided by 6 is equal to 2. And we take 24 and we divide it by 12, and that equals 2. So here we know our value of r, our common ratio, is 2. We typically go through this process if we have to show that r is equal to a specific value. But in this case, since we're only finding the sum up to the 13th term, we can use our mental math and we can see, ah, okay, it's going to go from 3 to 6 to 12 to 24. We're just multiplying that by 2, so we could also just say r is equal to 2. I just like to throw that out there to get it into your head that that is a good way to show that r is a specific value. And finally, we're trying to find what s of 13 is. That's what we're looking for. And we had said if the absolute value of r is greater than 1, then we should use the formula that looks like s of n is equal to u of 1 times r to the n minus 1, all divided by r minus 1. So let's use that in this example. So we're going to have s of 13 is equal to, I put my 13 down here because n is 13, so s of 13, s of 13, is going to be equal to 3 times the value of 2 to the 13th power minus 1, all divided by 2 minus 1. So I just substituted all those values straight into the equation. Now I'm going to do a little bit of simplifying. So I've got s of 13 is equal to 3 times 2 to the 13th, oof minus 1 all over 1. Please keep in mind that we're doing r of 13 minus 1, not r to the power of 13 minus 1. So this minus 1 is you taking this whole value minus 1. Remember in our geometric sequence, the uh, minus 1 is up here in the power, but in the series, it's just subtracting 1 here. So now we just keep on going, and s of 13 is going to be equal to 3 times 2 to the 13th which is 8,192 
minus one. Yeah, I knew that right off the top of my head. And then we are going to finally just continue to multiply this out. So three times 8,191 is equal to 24,573. There you go. You can check that with your calculator. So there's our first example of how to use a geometric series formula. I've got two more for you. Let's get to the second one. All right, so example two says, find the formula for the geometric series four minus two plus one minus one half and so on. So we're just trying to find the general formula for this. Once again, we've got u of one is equal to four. We've got r, well, let's see what's happening here. We've got this thing is going in half, is going in half again, and the signs are changing. So it looks like we're multiplying by a negative one half. Uh, we don't know n, and we don't know what our formula is. Before we said if our r value falls between negative one and one, we use s of n is equal to u of one times one minus r to the nth power over one minus r. And this r value is between these two, so we're gonna use this formula. So s of n, we don't know what s of n is, that's what we're trying to find. u of one is four, and we're gonna multiply that by one minus a negative one half to the nth power all over one minus a negative one half. I like that down there better. Uh, so let's simplify the denominator. So here we've got one minus a negative one half. So we're gonna have one plus one half and that makes that a little bit easier. So we've got four times one minus a negative one half to the nth power all over three over two. And now we know with our fraction rules that we're just gonna multiply the numerator by two and we're gonna end up dividing by three. So S of N is gonna be equal to eight times one minus a negative one half to the nth power all over three. It would be nice if we could simplify those negatives in the numerator, but remember the negative one half is in its own parentheses and that's got its own power to it. So we can't, we can't expand that negative out. We can't pull that negative out at all. So it's gotta stay in those parentheses. So we're just left with this minus and a minus in there and that's just the way it's gonna be. So this here is our formula for this geometric series. If I had any value of n, we could drop it in and we would get the sum up to that specific value of n, whatever that term number is. We got one more example. We're gonna build on some of our ideas here. We're gonna think a little bit deeper and let's get to that one next. This one says, what value does the infinite geometric series of this one plus one half plus one fourth converge. All right, so we've got some new terminology in here. First off, this idea of infinite geometric series, that means that n is going to approach infinity. You're going to keep on getting more and more and more. You're just going to add it up all the way to infinity. Before we get into what this value converges to though, let's go back to our original equations. We said that if the absolute value of r is greater than one, that had one equation and what happens with that is if we've got a value bigger than one or bigger than negative one, what actually happens is the equation or the series diverges. What does diverge mean? Well, that means that the sum is gonna be infinite because if I've got one and then I'm gonna add something bigger than one half, let's say I'm gonna put uh, add five. So I've got one plus five is gonna be six plus five is gonna be 11 and so on and so on and so on. And that goes on for infinity. That number is just gonna get infinitely bigger. There's not gonna be a specific value. So we say it diverges off to infinity. So we say the sum will also be infinite. However, if we look at the other equation uh, where we had negative one is less than r is less than positive one, where we've got the r value falling between negative one and one, then that is where the equation converges. And what it means to converge is it means that it's getting closer and closer to a specific value uh, that it's so close to that value that it's practically that value, so we just call it that value. Well, what does that mean? If we use the formula that corresponds to this, uh, which is S of N is equal to U of one times one minus R to the nth power, and we do one minus 
r, what's happening is that we're saying that this thing is going out to infinity. So let's look at just a really big number uh, just so we can get a feel for what's gonna happen. I'm gonna look at what happens if n equals 100. Now 100 is clearly not infinity, but it should get the idea across. So if we're looking at this piece, just this one piece of the equation, we've got one half to the 100th power, which is the same thing as one to the 100th power over two to the 100th power. Well, one to any power is one other than zero, and even zero, still one. So one to anything is one. And then two to the 100th power is a really big number. So what happens when you've got a fraction that's one over a really big number? Well, that fraction is basically turning into zero. It's what we say is it's approaching zero. So it's never gonna actually be zero. It's gonna be a, a, an infinitely small number, but it's never gonna actually be zero. However, if I were to add this infinitely small number or subtract this infinitely small number, it's basically like I'm adding and subtracting zero. Nothing's really gonna happen to the overall equation, to the overall uh, addition or subtraction. So if I now look at this, this is practically zero. So I'm taking one minus zero. So when I have an infinite geometric series and the R value is between negative one and one, the infinite sum of S is equal to U of one over one minus R. It's just that simple. And you'll see in your formula booklet with IB, you'll see that this formula, all three of these formulas that we've talked about today are in your formula booklet. You just need to know when to use them. So what is the overall sum to infinity of this particular sequence up here? Well, here we could see that R is equal to one half, right? Because we saw that this thing was cutting in half, cutting in half again. Uh, so we get R is equal to one half, U of one, is equal to one. So our equation of s to infinity is gonna be one over one minus one half, which is the same thing as one over one half, which is the same thing as two. So the sum of this value to infinity is equal to two. It seems kind of strange that it equals a specific value, but that's what happens when you converge. You're adding on all of these smaller and smaller pieces that you're basically just getting this one value because you're adding on such small bits. So that's geometric series in a nutshell. All the formulas that you need, if that was helpful, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like the video, share it with a friend, and I'll see you in the next video.